Well, welcome back to more about birth. I'm here with Shannon Bennett and Angie Hansen, and we are sheltering in. That's right. Lots of things have changed in our world today, but we're still excited to get together today to share with you. And it sounds like we may have a birthday today, Shannon. Yes, we're actually together because we are awaiting the call. We have someone in early labor, so we thought we'd try and sneak a podcast in here real quick. Awesome. And... Today, I thought we'd talk about fear and anxiety in pregnancy because clearly there's a lot of extra fear and anxiety going on right now and kind of the effects that that can have on you in pregnancy. Um, I know I am getting two to three calls every day with moms who are deciding that they probably don't want to go to the hospital for their birth and want to do a home birth. Mm. And unfortunately, it breaks my heart. I can't handle that many clients. So... Mm. I am referring them to whoever I know that may be able to take them. Um, so there's there's a lot of extra fear in our pregnant mamas right now and anxiety. Mm. And I know you um, have been studying in, in your book studies recently. Mm -hmm. And so you're probably, it's fresher in your mind than mine, some of the things that are talked about as far as fear in pregnancy and anxiety and the effect that it can have on mama and baby. So why don't you share some of the things that you've been learning recently, and then I'll tell you what I know. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, there's just a couple short things here. Um, and, you know, none of the stuff that we're going to talk about here in the beginning um, about the bad effects of stress and anxiety, we don't want to add to your stress yeah, level really. by yeah, bringing those exactly. out. Yeah. It's just we're just going to kind of breeze over those, but it's simply to point out that it does affect you and it does mm -hmm. affect your baby. And so just to take note of that and take it seriously so that you can deal with it in a healthy way um, rather than just letting it exist in your life. So one of the things that I thought was really interesting here, this is from um, Anne Fry's book, Volume 1, Holistic Midwifery. And it's one of our midwifery textbooks mm -hmm. that we reference a lot. Um, and it's talking about diet and how... <clears throat> There she goes about diet again. I, told you. I can't help it. I didn't make it up. I agree. I agree. Okay. So stressful situations add to a woman's overall calorie and nutrient requirements mm -hmm. for each relevant factor. And there's a list of a bunch of them add 220 calories and 20 grams of protein to the basic diet. And there's, there's your excuse to eat more. Yeah, what? <laughs> we're not we're not saying sit at home and do nothing and eat, you know, candy and potato chips, but that's just simply to but point stress out burns that calories. It does, and that's a lot. I never would have guessed. Well, you know, that when you've much. gone through a stressful time in your life and you just realize you've lost a few pounds, mm -hmm. that explains it. I usually gain, but I know what you mean. It's a real yeah. thing. <laughs> no, anyways, so um you know, just that, just to point out that especially we all need to pay attention to our nutrition right now, mm -hmm. but especially in pregnancy. Um, well, the protein thing is interesting. It really is 20 grams. And it, these yeah. are like, um, you know, on this list, we have relationship problems, difficulties with children, um, financial difficulties, um, well, and right now we have worry about parenting, extra lack of personal support, financial difficulties, <laughs> emotional support. Yeah. Um, where our load is heavier because we're at home with our kids and homeschooling. Yeah. We have. Um, so wait a minute. You're saying that system. I can lower my stress and anxiety by eating. No, 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 no. no I'm you saying can take care of your body and your baby. Yeah, by okay. I just. I just want to clarify that because some people like me hear what they want to hear right, right. and I'm going, okay, tacos, burritos. So, but it's what you're eating and that you're getting protein is what you're saying. Yeah. It's just a note to pregnant mamas yes. that stress actually can affect the way your body is processing mm -hmm. calories, protein, wow. and new, you know, growing your baby. Absorbing so, nutrients. Yeah, yeah. So keep, keep note yeah. of that. Um, and, and with what we're going through right now in our world, there's several things that are going on. You know, like I said, you're home with your kids. You're not maybe used to that. You're homeschooling. Maybe you're not used to that. Um, you're not getting the social interaction that you normally do. You're not probably getting the same amount of exercise you usually do. You've got financial issues. Maybe you're concerned about your older parents. There's just a lot going on, mm -hmm. especially right now. There's a lot of moms. I'm getting calls, like I said, about going to the hospital. Um, so that's a, that's a big stressor for pregnant moms right now. Maybe their birth plan has totally changed. Yeah. Um, 
Maybe they're not allowed to have the people there in the hospital with them that they thought they were going to. Right. So calorie up. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, another thing that I read that I wanted to point out was <clears throat> about how you relate to your baby. So it says, Women will experience a range of emotions during pregnancy, fears and concerns, as well as joys and anticipations. Women need not feel guilty about this. It's perfectly normal. However, it will be helpful to her developing baby's future emotional health if she acknowledges to her baby that her emotional responses are her own. They are not originating from the baby or the baby's fault. This will help the baby differentiate its feelings from those of the parents. So, you know, that might sound a little bit new agey to some people or a little bit out there. But So you, give us an example of how you would do that. So if you hear something on the news mm -hmm. and you take it in and a few minutes later you realize, oh, wow, I'm feeling really stressed about that or mm -hmm. really anxious. You just talk to your baby about it. Just say, I mean, I know it sounds weird, but it's not. Like you are one with your baby when yeah. that baby's growing inside of you. Just and tell them they're you, safe. Yeah, and just say, you know what? I'm not stressed because of you. I am so excited to welcome mm -hmm. you, so excited to meet you. And there's a lot going on in the world, but you're safe in here. Yep. And we love you and we can't That's wait right. to meet you. So connecting with your baby and talking to your baby is going to not only reduce your own stress levels and, you know, bring about those beautiful, um, safe um, nurturing. Well, hormones. we do that even in labor or yeah. if we have a baby that's born and it's just kind of a little floppy and not mm -hmm. kind of coming around real quickly. We have the parents talk to the baby and tell them, you know, we are so glad you're here and, yeah. and we welcome you, you know, <laughs> right. Come be part of our family. So and what so you're saying is it's okay to realize <laughs> that baby's there too, even though you, you haven't had the baby, because if you're holding the baby yeah, after birth, yeah. that's different than when it's in your womb, and they but do it's not feel really in reality. our anxiety. Yeah, absolutely. And there's even other things that um, we don't have specific stats on, but they mm -hmm. are, they've been proven in studies, you know, that stress can affect baby's growth um, and it can really cause a whole host of issues yeah. in their development. So that's not to scare you. It's just to say, acknowledge that work through it for yourself and work yes. through it with your baby so that they are mm -hmm. sheltered and protected and as much a part of that process as possible. And don't bury it, you know, face your fears and your anxiety and, and talk about it and work through it. Yeah. And we're talking about constant like anxiety, stress, like in a really bad situation that could affect your baby. Something fleeting like this, um, I don't I don't think would have the same effect. So don't freak out about no. your baby being, you know, having something wrong with it because you're stressed right now. Right. No. Just be aware of it. Yep. Be aware of it. So um, in the second half of the podcast today, we're actually going to talk about some of the things you see here some things that you can do practically to help stress, some things that you can do for relaxation, just some tools for you. So, you know, stay tuned with us. Don't don't turn us off until we give you all the goodies. <laughs> so before we go to the break, I, I had a question. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Yes. Q&A. <laughs> um, so people, I think, struggle <clears throat> with anxiety and stress and how to manage it anyway, right? And oh, then yeah. now in our current situation. Oh, it's rampant. And we, so I think we look at the whole world right now and we see all this stuff going on. And yet people have stuff going on all the time and right. they still struggle with anxiety. So do you guys have anything that you do to help relieve anxiety or stress in, in your own lives that maybe would help some of our viewers know how to my biggest thing and sometimes my husband laughs at me but tv for me you know having a good show that i've put on the dvr and i watch later is really relaxing to me or reading a good book it's my way of just totally shutting everything out going to another place where my brain is not engaged in all this stuff that's going on. And sometimes all it takes is just a half hour of watching Cake Boss or, <laughs> you know, When Calls the Heart comes on every week and I look forward to that or maybe one of my medical shows that I love. Um, and that's all it takes for me just to shut my brain down and relax and usually end up falling asleep on the couch. <laughs> I get so relaxed. Um, the other thing is talking for me, talking it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's your go-to for stress? Oh, my. I have so Chocolate. many. Chocolate. <laughs> 
chocolate. Dark, Always chocolate. Dark chocolate is dark her chocolate. happy place. Dark chocolate actually is good for you. It does seriously help reduce stress. It helps almost everything. It does. <laughs> You're looking at me like we're I know, nuts. I know. It's always amazing. <laughs> it's a, Look it up. Super food. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, Look the, it up. it's the super response, the chocolate response. <laughs> um, oh, boy. I have so many. Well, we'll talk about some, you know, in the next half. But, um, yeah, I, I talk. I unload on people, usually my well, husband. <laughs> and I know I know as Christians, we we go to the Bible. We pray. We yeah. play worship music. That is something that's a big de-stressor to me. And I know Absolutely, you've talked yeah. about the same thing. Yeah. So one of the things that I heard <laughs> recently is I was watching a podcast and did not realize like Russell Wilson, who is the quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks. And I'm sure there's some fans out there for football. And, you know, he was sharing how, you know, a lot of the athletes listen to music. He has a worship track that he plays every single time he's getting his head ready. He says it just centralizes his thoughts you know yeah. mm -hmm. and 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 helps him de-stress and just get ready for the game and so i think music in general what amazed me is so many artists now are doing these little private concerts all over social mm -hmm. media it's amazing and i think one artist said i know that to some people music is like uh, um an antidote you know like a relaxation a thing yeah, yeah bomb and they said so if this if this touches you then that's why we're doing it. It was really cool to see. Yeah, that is really cool to see. Yeah, Keith Urban next to Nicole Kidman just doing a private concert on social media and for free. It was amazing. And so I think before we go to the break, I think we also need to give a shout out to all our medical professionals and our nurses and all these people on the front yes, line. Yes, thank you. Sure. So thank we so you. this applause is for you. We are impressed. Even the guy at the grocery store that's still helping make yes. sure that people are surprised, supplies. And that's amazing to They're us. So and, important. So um, we just want to give you um, some applause here on our <laughs> podcast as we applaud you guys and thank you so much for what you're doing out there. So Yes, yeah. thank you. Before we go to the break, I wanted to touch a little bit on um, some of the other effects in pregnancy because okay. after the break, I'd like to end on a positive note yeah. with some things that we can do that are really helpful. Yeah. Um, so immune system. Yeah. Biggie. Stress affects our immune system. What are some other things you can think of that stress really can affect? I mean, in a big way. Um, yeah, well, your immune system, your blood pressure. Yes, blood pressure in pregnancy is a biggie. We don't want high blood pressure. No, yeah, it's, it's really huge. Mm -hmm. um, um, what about just how it affects our muscles when we tense up? Oh, yeah. Causing headaches, back aches. For sure. All kinds of things. Yeah, and that can put your hips out of alignment and <clears throat> mm -hmm. affect the way your baby's yes. sitting in your pelvis. Yes. And yeah. I know whenever I'm stressed, I tend to lose sleep. My mind races and uh -huh. I can't sleep. Yep. We don't want our pregnant mamas losing sleep. No. Um, and then there's an increase in depression when yep. anxiety is playing a role in things. We're already socially isolated, so talk to me a minute about how um, that social isolation right now is playing into the anxiety and, and the effects that it's having on mamas. Yeah, well, you know, everybody's world and has been turned upside down to some degree or another. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when your routine is all out of whack and you're not able <laughs> to connect with your family and, the you know, your extended family right. perhaps and the people that you're used to going to um, for, you know, your social group, your church, whatever right. it is, your support system, um and it's just not the same. There's actually physical, chemical mm -hmm. things that happen when you connect with people in person. And or so, hug people. Ab yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm dying touch. when I do see my moms that we aren't doing, you know, yeah. video chatting for their appointments. I'm dying because I can't <laughs> hug them. Right. Right, for sure. And so all those things um, are going to even increase that feeling of isolation mm -hmm. and kind of increase your stress because yep. the places that you used to go to de-stress maybe aren't there anymore, those places and people. Yep. So um, we'll talk about more things that you can do in the second half, but you Definitely. know, you have to find something that is bigger <clears throat> than everything you're going through right now and yes. it's more solid and more immovable. So yes, um, so we'll talk more about that. We'll bring some of that to you after the break. 
Well, there you have the first half of today's episode of More About Birth. We got great topics when we get back from the break. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the other side of the break. Well, welcome back from the break. We're here at More About Birth. I'm with our hosts, Shannon Bennett and Angie Henson, and we have more great stuff to talk about today with mamas and babies and with what's going on in our world today. So, Shannon? Well, first of all, I want to invite you to stay with us because at the end of this podcast, we're going to talk about some of the things that you see here on the table, um, things yeah. that are practical items to help you deal with stress. And then we're going to be talking about now other things that you can do. In fact, Angie, why don't you, why don't you go for it? Okay. So yeah, we just are going to start running through our list here of tips and tricks and things that we recommend. So, um, one of them is yoga. It's an easy thing to do in your house. It's yes. great for stretching and aligning your body. And and there's some great pregnancy yoga videos on YouTube. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. They're specific to um, prenatal. And, you know, you can do them in your house. You can pretty much do them anywhere. There's short ones, so you can definitely fit them in. Um, and, you know, those are a great way. A lot of those videos will actually walk you through talking to your baby and connecting with your baby like we talked about mm -hmm. in the first half. And so... Um, yeah, those are a great way just to kind of slow down for a second, connect with your baby. Um, yeah. Maybe we can even put a, a link at the end of the podcast. Yep. Yeah. And in the notes on um, the YouTube channel. And um, yeah, and you have some yeah. of those items available on the website as well. Yeah. Well, what else do you have? Um, so I've been talking a lot with my husband the last few days about um the importance of physical touch. He actually brought it up to me and I just, mm -hmm. you know, it was so good. So in this time of isolation and not, um, you know, touching people as much, not hugging other people, the people that you can touch, like the people that are in your home, in your mm -hmm. space, make use of that. Have you noticed that just subconsciously you're not even touching your own family as much? Uh, we I have don't because we're really touchy, but I find myself subconsciously just thinking, okay, no touch, no touch, no touch. Right. And then I'm like, Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, no. And I live with these people. And yeah. Like the people that you're already exposed to, I mean, do it safely, of course, if they've been out and about, but don't isolate yourself from the no. people that are within your grasp. You need to like actually go in the opposite direction. Physical touch is very important. It's so good. You know, if you have a chance with someone, you know, your spouse or what, whoever, um, trade massages, like it is so good and you don't have to be a professional. It's relaxing. Great it's stress so relief. Good. Yes. So yeah. give each other some massages, um, <laughs> give your people some love, hug people. Um, and along with that, kind of trying to push back against just the heaviness that settles over everyone as we're all kind of processing and dealing with this is speaking out words of life and love because um, our words actually can bring life, they you can. know, life or death is in the yes. tongue. And so um, speaking words of life can actually change the atmosphere yes. around you. In fact, the next podcast that we're going to do after this, we're kind of trying to do a couple today while we have the opportunity and are together is going to be about all the positive things that have come out of this situation mm. and the positive stories that they're not telling us about and the changes that it's made in our families. Yeah, for sure. So um, it's really easy to get going in like just your own mind and in your mm -hmm. own track and kind of um, just doing things around in your own head. So trying to slow down, be aware of what's going on, how you're feeling, what your thoughts have been, and actually make yourself speak something out loud well, that's you, positive, that's life-giving. You mentioned earlier our phones or media. So talk about yeah. that. Yeah. So that's another one of my points because I'm going through this with you people. Like mm -hmm. I, you know, 
We're we're receiving medical updates by the oodles. We're receiving news updates. Everyone's home more. So everyone is on their phone more and communicating, which is great, you know, to connect with people. But it can also steamroll your day and your time in a big hurry. And one thing that I have found. It feeds your soul all these negative things. It does, yeah. And so one thing that I found, honestly, get rid of your phone. Like, get rid of your media. Get rid of your internet. Seriously, if you have not done this, put your phone in another room for like an hour. Just step away from it and see what it does for you. If you've never done that, give it a try. It can change your depression and anxiety levels majorly. Along those lines, this is kind of comical actually, but because of the extra things they're asking us to do for sanitary purposes and in our offices and things, I did a thorough cleaning of my office for hours on Monday It took forever. I disinfected all the toys. I just did all this stuff. And the whole time I was doing that, I wasn't on my phone. I wasn't checking texts. I knew it would ring if someone needed me. And when I got done, I was like, that felt so good to just do something mindless and not have that constant stirring of my brain about what is going on. Yeah, even vacuuming for me, vacuuming the stairway in the bedroom and wiping things down to help clean the house. Actually, yeah, I was believe it or not, I was looking forward to it when you said that we were gonna have a cleaning day. You were looking forward to vacuuming? (laughs) You should have never told me. The world is upside down. Well you know I I have a friend this week that said that he was mowing his lawn and it was therapeutic to him. He has acres to mow and he goes to do normal things. And he said it was literally like I went one way and I would think about all of the negative stuff. I went the other way and I think about all the positive stuff. And I said, you just need to mow one way. One direction. <laughs> and so, yeah, when I was vacuuming, you know, my, I used muscles I hadn't used in a while vacuuming the stairs, but it was therapeutic. So anything like that. that yeah. Be- if you guys can just do normal things that yeah. can shut out all the thought process that's going on constantly. Yeah. And so getting rid of your phone and along with that, it's a good um, idea. This is this is huge, but do one thing at a time. Resist the urge to multitask because that's oh, what happens. I'm is bad at that. When when you're communicating with people, when you're texting, email, getting news updates, and you're on your phone constantly while you're caring for kids that and maybe are fixing dinner and, and fixing throwing laundry and and to, and you know, break up fights with the kids and all this. You're just going, going, going. And so yesterday I tried it's- this. I made myself do one thing at a time. If I'm making food for the kids, was it a lot less stressful? It was phenomenal. Yeah, it's one less. It's one thing on your plate instead of spinning all the plates. Well, but you think it. You think you're getting more done. You're like, okay, I'm going to text. But what are you? This thing on Amazon and research it while I'm. What are you doing to your adrenal glands, though? It's it's horrible. Yeah, you're burning, taxing your adrenals. And yeah, and so in the long run, it actually makes you less productive. So yeah, again, if you haven't tried this, try to discipline your mind and yourself. to do one thing at a time Good and idea. be fully present for Good that idea. thing. Um, so that's my my good tip. And my last one before I throw it back to you, Shannon, is um, to work through your fears. Don't mm-hmm. ignore them. They're there. And yeah. so letting them they're not fester. Gonna go away. <laughs> they're not. Yeah, the stress and the you know everything we're dealing with isn't gonna just go away overnight. So um, deal with it. Work through it. Um, don't yes. just let it stew and sit in the background and fester. Um, you know, I love this verse that says, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you, you yes. know, speaking about God. But the, the, the thing that anyone can draw from that truth and that reality is that we are going to be afraid sometimes yeah. we are going to have human. stress, acknowledge that, but you have to do something and with not that. dwell you have on to it, cast it somewhere, place it somewhere. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, what, you know, whatever that I've is. I've even had times where I physically have had stress, especially with my older children. And I will literally hold my hands together and imagine all the stress and the worry and the anxiety I have and just throw it away. And yes. sometimes I have to do it several times a day, but Yes. Whatever it is that you have to do to take that stress from here and put it over here. Yes, awesome. absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So there are some actual really practical, concrete things that you can do for stress during pregnancy that yeah. are safe and helpful. One of my huge go-tos is always 
my Epsom salts bath oh, yeah. with some lavender. Yeah, so what is it with Epsom salts <clears throat> that seems to be such a, a an awesome thing for Epsom the body? Epsom salts help relax muscles. Wow. And lavender is a natural essential oil that is very calming and has a calming effect. Mm -hmm. mm. So if you don't like a bath, that's one thing. I love baths. And so soaking in an Epsom salts bath and lighting a few candles is super relaxing. I should put yeah. up the picture in the podcast of you <laughs> in your in your new soaking tub in your new house before it was <laughs> even the tub. Yeah, it's just it's just the frame. Yeah. What kind of a podcast? Is I know. This? Is this no? This is Shannon fully clothed. Here's the photograph, oh, right? No. In a framed wood. In a framed wood. Because it was such a tub. it was such a happy thought we had to capture it. So I Aww. never did capture her in it when it was done. And you, you know, won't. just sitting in that I won't. But I did <laughs> capture her and she has this silly good look on her face. So anyway, I hope you appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, it was great. Um, so let's start with homeopathic remedies. A lot of you have probably heard of Rescue Remedy. You can get it at any health food section of a grocery store like Yolks or Fred Meyer. You can get it at the health food store online. Super supplements. Yes, thank you. It is just a stress-relieving combination homeopathic remedy, and it really is amazing. It can be used as often as needed, just a few drops under your tongue. For someone that doesn't understand homeopathic remedies. Yeah, so I'm going to sound like a crazy person now. So homeopathy, um, <laughs> I'll use the example of nausea. So homeopathy is a very, very, very dilute preparation of a particular um, substance. So most of us are familiar with Nux Vomica um, or we Epicac. Uh -huh. Oh, Angie. <laughs> yeah. How about Epicac? If your kids yes. drink yeah. something poison, you give them Epicac to make them throw up. Right. So in the world of homeopathy, if you are feeling nauseous and throwing up, you would take a very dilute preparation of Epicac in a homeopathic form. And it's kind of the theory that like cures like. So if you're nauseous, you take right. something that would normally cure nausea. If you're anxious, you take something that would normally make you anxious. So, mm. so like I would think the most famous <clears throat> one would be Arnica in, in our world. Right. Yeah. Which is to t cut down swelling. Right. Yep. Bruising and swelling yeah. and, and trauma. Mm -hmm. And I and I have stories of that working with, you know, in amazing ways. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, homeopathy could be a whole podcast and yes. maybe we'll right. do that sometime. But that's in a nutshell. Cool. So another big go to that we have is essential oils. And there's a lot of different companies out there. Um, I happen to use doTERRA just because that's the one I use. Um, be careful in pregnancy. Don't just take any essential oil because they're not all safe. Like don't use clary sage, even though it's a great de-stressor, it can also cause contractions. So geranium, lavender, and chamomile are really great essential oils um, just for stress in general. They can be used singly. They can be combined in a carrier oil and rubbed on the bottom of your feet. Bottom of your feet have really large pores, and so they absorb the essential oils easily. Um, and what is it that we have that we use all the time that just supposed to wake you up? What is that? It's in the shower at our house. Oh, we keep breathe oil. Mm -hmm. It's yep. a combination. It's a I just would put a drop of that on the bottom of the shower where the yep. water's running, and it just... It helps. Yeah, it's invigorating. Yeah, it's got invigorating. some eucalyptus and peppermint and different yeah. things in I it. I feel like I'm at a spa. Anyway. <laughs> you can pretend. Okay. So essential oils are awesome. In fact, we use them a lot at birth, don't we? Yeah, for sure. Get a mama that's getting kind of anxious and we'll put a little lavender behind her ears. And, yeah, yep. And she'll calm right down. Um, what about herbs? What are our go-to herbs? Or what's something that most people have at home that they could use as far as a tea form? Yeah, so um, we love to give people this recipe. In fact, um, Shannon gave this to me when I was pregnant with my second baby. And um, I've never forgotten it. It's one of my favorite go-tos. Mm -hmm. So you boil some water, take three bags of chamomile tea, and you put in like just a cup of water. So it's not like a full cup of tea, but it's really concentrated. Mm -hmm. You cover it, let it sit for 20 minutes. Yep. 
Um, and then you squeeze those tea bags out. So this is like Got all the super good stuff. concentrated. Um, you squeeze those bags out, suck that down, put the whole thing down. It's amazing. It, it makes really it medicinal is. strength when you brew it that so way. So what does it do? What's what's the reaction then to Chamomile you? Chamomile is a re calming. calming, relaxing. Wow. It just helps you chill out. Like if you're mm -hmm. bordering on a panic attack even like it's really mm -hmm. powerful it's good it's stuff it's great so you know help you sleep if you're having trouble sleeping and your mind's racing bed. yep and there are some other products um these are things that i carry so <clears throat> this is valerian root valerian root is also another product and it comes in a pill form also it's safe in pregnancy um, it helps with like the whole restless jumpy leg thing, the mind racing, the not being able to fall asleep, mm -hmm. the anxiety, stress. You can take 200 to 300 milligrams twice a day mm. of this. So maybe bedtime's a good time or at whatever point in the day when you're feeling stressed. There are adrenal support combinations that are good for people who have a continuous anxiety and stress issue. Mm -hmm. This one's from Mountain Meadow Herbs and it's actually made for pregnant nursing mamas. So how does adrenal help <clears throat> you relax then and get rid of nerves and all well, that? Well, it's just the fact that our adrenal glands are what help us to stay stable. Okay. And when we're stressed constantly, we they, just really they drain them. tax them and deplete them. Yeah. Yeah. Which so, then you can't cope. And then that gives you anxiety. And, right. and, it, and then it makes it worse. Vicious cycle. Yeah. So B complex is another important one. If you're not taking a B complex daily, you can do 250 milligrams of ginkgo a day, 500 milligrams of magnesium. Mm -hmm. These are just some safe things during pregnancy. Um, Plus right now for someone that just wants to build up their immune system, any, you know, all this stuff is going to help build you back. Yeah. Up. There's so many immune yeah immune building herbs. Um, we talked about diet before a biggie is to cut out white sugar. Yeah. Cut out white sugar, find a way that you can relax, whatever that is for you. Yeah. And I just want to leave you with, um, a scripture in Isaiah 41 10 that says, don't fear because I'm with you. I will strengthen you and help you. And that is a promise from God. Mm. So take that mm. to heart. It's awesome. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this episode of More About Birth like I have. It's just interesting to have these conversations about something we don't talk a lot about, stress and anxiety right. and, and the mamas out there and the world. And again, we just want to say a special thank you to everyone who's doing everything they can to keep us safe, especially those of you that are out on the front lines. Um, Shannon and Angie, as you still are out there helping uh, mamas with babies and you know, all the things that you have to do now to make sure you're safe. So we appreciate that. So we hope that you've enjoyed this podcast. Again, we'll see you here on the next episode of More About Birth. Until then, be safe and um, God Thanks bless. Thanks for tuning Thanks. in. Go love your babies.